Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of your Firefighter Road or your DFW resource. Today I'm bringing you guys October 2022 Dallas market update. And uh, this is just going to be some good information for you guys to take to the agent that you guys are working with here in DFW or another state. And you guys are moving to DFW. You need information about where to live or probably just, just some guidance, really. Uh, Mackenzie and I moved here uh, three years ago from Austin, Texas. We thought it would be easy to move here, but DFW has so much to offer. There's so many places to live, so many things to do. We wanted to be closer to a certain area. We thought that would be good. We did. We ended up moving to not so great apartment complex. There's a lot of things kind of mixed and jumbled of a whole bunch of information that we got, but we never had an effective resource that we could use. That's what I want to be for you guys. If you guys don't have an agent here in DFW, I'd love to help you guys out. Please call me. I have some or email me, I have all my information below. And uh, all right, let's start with something fun really quick. If you guys are moving to Dallas and you guys are gonna spend a weekend here and trying to figure out, hey, let's find out something fun to do in the meantime, Dallas Loveless is your place to be. Go to dallasloveless.com. You can follow them on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, follow their blog. And they every week they give out, uh, sometimes it's a little bit more, I think it's always five things to do that are pretty fun, things you can go do that are generally inexpensive. Um, for this weekend, you have the best Halloween weekends happening in DFW. You can click on that. Spookiest haunted houses in DFW. No, thank you. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, there's so many blogs they have that are like, hey, things to do in Fort Worth, breweries to go see, whatever you guys want to do. So that's that. Let's get started on. Nope, not that. I want to show you guys. This is North Texas, North Texas, DFW. This is all the counties that it encompasses. They are looking at by 2030, this place is gonna be 10 million people uh, is projected estimates. And right now I think it, they say it's like 7.58 million people and it's four flying hours from anywhere in the United States. Not, actually 98% of the United States um, out of DFW airport. That's that's nuts. Imagine living in New York and every time you want to travel to Los Angeles, that's like a six, I think it's like a six hour flight. That would be inconvenient. You can live here and be four hours within anywhere in the United States. And this is just kind of the largest cities break down. If you move in Dallas, Fort Worth, the population, uh, Frisco, that's up here in Collin County, right about here. Actually, it's about right there. Uh, Allen, Flower Mound, these are all the major cities. This is a cool little thing. If you go to ntc-dfw.org, North Texas Commission, this gives you everything about the education level here. If you guys are looking for schools, uh, what different jobs are here. Here are the major colleges and universities. Some businesses, what's going on. As you can see, largest U.S. metro area, Dallas, Fort Worth, 7.7. .7. There it is. Behind Chicago, Los Angeles. New York and right there Houston's right behind us I mean it's not not far and let's see if there's one thing I want to show you lots of breweries <laughs> a lot of wineries these are 15 professional sports teams here in the DFW area if you guys don't like hockey go watch basketball if you don't like that go watch Rangers if you guys don't like Rangers go like the Cowboys no one likes the Cowboys I don't know why they're the best team ever just kidding. If you guys like, don't like the Cowboys. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so go check out the North Texas Commission. That's some really good basic information. Okay, so let's get started. If you guys are looking to buy a home, I kind of hit on this point real quick. No, the Fed hike does not mean anything for mortgage rates. So when the Fed's going to come out here in November and hike interest rates again, well, they say they would. Let's say they do. And that, what is the Fed fund rates? If you kind of look at this article here, go follow mortgagenewsdaily.com. Um, this is a great resource for you guys. Don't just listen to, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry and <laughs> think that they know everything about mortgage rates. Go to someone that's professional and let them teach you. I'm not a financial advisor. I know a lot about it, but I'm not even a mortgage lender. I am a real estate agent. And I help you find a house, buy a house, negotiate for a home. So this kind of teaches you what the Fed funds rates is, how rates do sometimes react. And uh, why it doesn't really matter. This is just some good articles for you to read. Here's some other ones to date. 
uh, this is actually another one that I thought was pretty great. Mortgage applications hit a hit 25 year low here for October 19th. There we go, 2022. And goes into some of the things a lot of people are scared. Let's put their money into a house that just goes lower and it takes more time to build up equity. Some highlights that they have from this survey. All right. So buyers purchasing power. So this is just a basic estimate from mortgagecalculator.net. If you guys are looking to buy a $400,000 house at a 7% interest, which, yeah, they have been laying around 7%, 7.25. These are the estimates that you would be paying on a $400,000 house or four forty dollars right here. And you can tell, I mean, really, the average house right now that's a decent home and a decent area, right? Lay around right here. Um, of course, you can easily go outside of this price range. If you go to the upper mid cities like Colleyville, South Lake, um, Keller, or if you just go to Frisco, North Plano, you can, you're hard pressed to find houses in this range right now. And of course, these are just estimates. Don't take this literally. Uh, we saw that. All right, report. Dallas Fort Worth has one of the top five fastest growing economies in the U.S. This is why we are growing so quickly. This is a picture of downtown right here. Yes, we are growing very quickly. There is a lot of growth. So many new home builds in the outskirts of Dallas. Even in the um, inner cities, there's a lot of home growth. That a lot of houses that are being remodeled, bought, taken down, rebuilt. If you look at the Greenville area. Um, that's a really big example. If you look at the Trinity Grove area, that's another big example of houses that are being bought, torn down, built into like mini high rises, condos, all that good stuff. So, all right. This is something to take to your financial advisor. I thought this would be kind of important for you guys. This is really big for something that would be, or actually something important that would be good for you guys to know, to take to your CPA for you guys to, in the future, buy a house here soon the new income tax brackets. And these are the marginal tax brackets going on. I am not a CPA. I'm just telling you, you should probably go talk to your CPA because this is pretty important on why this would make sense for you guys to buy a house or not buy a house, okay? Marginal tax brackets for single individuals. If you're single, this is pretty important, okay. Keeping Current Matters has an article that just came out. A fixed interest rate allows you to maintain the biggest portion of housing expenses at the same payment. There are things, there are loans out there that are called ARMS, adjustable rate mortgages. It's, they, they are just that adjustable rate mortgages, which means is that they have a variable rate. So depending on which mortgage ARM that you get, sometimes those can be changed every five years. So instead of just getting like a 7% mortgage fixed rate and you pay 7% those 30 years that you bought the house, adjustable rate mortgages can vary and your rate can go like this. But your introductory rate at the very beginning can be a low rate, lower than that of a fixed rate. Usually they are. Um, I would really recommend you talking to your financial advisor and making sure that that makes sense for you guys because a lot of times it doesn't. Um, but sometimes it does. Sometimes if you only stay in the house for less than 10 years and then you guys sell the house because you guys had a better rate or if you, this is your dream house, that's something that you're going to have to talk to your lender about. Just make sure that you guys know that there is a fixed rate and a variable rate mortgages that are out there. Don't be fooled by mortgage lenders that just tell you, hey, this is a good rate. You should just go with it. You guys get conned into something that probably won't fit your budget here in the near future. So. I just like to be a resource for people. Just tell them kind of what I think. All righty. Okay, let's get to the meat and juicy stuff. If you guys ever visit Metro Tex, it's our association uh, for our realtor, our MLS. They come out with these housing reports, and these are the housing report numbers that I've been wanting to get to you guys. The Texas housing reports for, or the numbers for North Texas, close sales 15 down 15.7%. Active listings are up 61%. More people are starting to want to sell. The month's worth of inventory is 2.7. This is like, this is so crazy because in about six months ago, the months of inventory was around like, I think it was 1.1 or 1.2, something like that. It was a lot lower 
than what it is right now. And the month's worth of inventory shows a lot. That basically means if you're competing, well, month's worth of inventory is basically if nothing else went on the market today and forward, it would take 2.7 months to sell everything on the market. The more houses that are on the market, the more you are competing with if you are trying to sell your house. If you're trying to buy your house, if you try to buy a house, that means there's more inventory for you to look at. This is actually a good number for you. Um, days on the market is 78. This is a good number for buyers. Buyers are liking that, the, that it's taking longer for people to put in offers. There's not multiple offers. They don't have to go over the price or the list price to get a house. This is something buyers like. Your agent should be able to tell you days on the market for the area and months worth of inventory. This is very, very important. This really goes into pricing of what uh, for the houses that are on the market. The median price did go up 11.4 since September of 2021. So this is Texas. If you guys need this in Spanish, if you guys have any Spanish speakers, if you guys would like any information in Spanish, here you go. All right, guys, Collin County, Collin County Housing Report. This is Collin County is uh, towns like Frisco, Prosper, McKinney, Allen. Um, those are the cities that you're going to be looking at for Collin County. The median price up there is 520 If you guys can see from Dallas, uh, from, sorry, we didn't look at Dallas. We just looked at Kelly. My bad. Uh, active listings are up 93%. This is a crazy amount because it was not that. Uh, close sales is down 24%. Actually, I have a friend that is selling his house in um, Frisco and it has been on the market for five months and they have just been doing price adjustments after price adjustments, just going lower, lower, lower. And uh, it, it kind of sucks, you know, like for, for the seller, but for the buyer, hey, guess what? You're going in there, you guys are getting a lot better of a deal. You guys aren't having to put um, any money over the list price here's the days on the market 72 months worth of inventory is 2.3 i remember i know it says 1. Uh, 1.0 in september 2021 it was actually i saw 0. 0.9 i think it was february or january here of 2022 was a month's worth of inventory that is super high competition usually months worth of inventory for a buyer's market somewhere between six and nine months worth of inventory that's where you know the market's starting to kind of even out. Dallas County, median price 352, active listings 15.5, close sales down 20.2 months worth of inventory. This is what you're seeing right here. Dallas market, or days on the market here in Dallas, 61. Alrighty, Denton County, Ball City Light, Denton. You have active listings up 107.3%, close sales down 14 or 13.4%, and months worth of inventory 2.4 days on the market. Like I said, these are the two big numbers you guys are going to need to know. Ellis County is south, the county south of Dallas, and uh, they they're starting to have some big homes go out there. Active listings up 119%, days on the market 80. That's a lot. That's that's a lot. Months worth of inventory is three. This is this was not three last year. <laughs> One point five. Close sales though, down point six. It means houses are still selling. Maybe this is going to balance out here. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Let's talk about Rockwell County, which is um, east of Dallas. Active listings one hundred five percent. Close sales, 13. Month's worth of inventory, 3.1. This is probably going to even out, probably around 3.5. I don't know. Days on the market, 8.82. I did an open house for a house out here in Rockwall. Beautiful house. And ended up selling at like two and a half months. So that's right about right there with the month's worth of inventory. Tarrant County. Talk about Tarrant County. That's going to involve cities like uh, Haltom City, Northwestern Hills, um, um, Fort Worth, all the cities. Um, Median price, uh, 353. Active listing, 63.5% up. Close sales down 21%. Month's worth of inventory is 2.1. Maybe this will sell around 2.53. I don't know. Total 61 days on the market. So there's a lot of houses here that are within the DFW area. All right, guys. 
So that's just all the information that I wanted to give you guys. Take it as you will. Take it to your agent. You guys talk about um, all these resources. Make a good decision for yourself. Don't be rushed into a house. Here's my little tidbit. If you are renting right now and you are achieving your financial goals, then why change what you're doing? Don't you don't have to buy a house to be, you know, some a lot of people say you have that's how you pass generational wealth. Yes, that's one way of passing generational wealth. But if what you're doing right now and you're achieving your financial goals for yourself and your family, continue renting. Don't be forced to buy a house. But I advise you that maybe if you if you are renting you are subject it's like a variable rate you are subject to your prices going like this in your um in your rent but if you would like a fixed rate mortgage that's one way to hedge against inflation is to have a fixed rate mortgage which is aka a house so um that's pretty much it guys if you guys have any questions please reach out i'll be happy to help you guys out um try to give you guys all this info all see you guys later peace